Hello and welcome to the second of two videos going through a lot of integration questions, one after the other, slowly building up the skills of integration. Here we're going to be looking at integration by substitution, integration by parts, and integration using partial fractions. Let's jump in straight into the questions. So we're integrating here brackets 3x plus 4 all cubed. Okay, so let me show you how integration by substitution works. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking inside this cubed bracket or uh, ins the inside function basically and replacing it with a different letter. We'll call that letter u. So we're going to now be replacing u with 3x, so replacing 3x plus 4 with u into this integral here. So it's going to turn into the integral of u cubed dx. But what you can obviously see here is that generally it's an integral with respect to x and then a dx on the end. But in this case here it's a u integration with a dx on the end. And we need to fix this. We can't do the integration as it is at the moment. So what we need to do is we need to take our substitution and differentiate it. du by dx equals 3. Because uh, when we differentiate 3x plus 4 we just get 3. And then what we need to do is a little bit of rearranging, so it turns into dx equals one third du. And you can see how this would happen. You divide by 3 onto the left, times by dx up onto the right, and you get, uh, it's treating du and dx as two parts of a fraction, and you get this thing here. So this is going to be equivalent then to u cubed times a third. We'll put factorize that third to the front, du. And now we can integrate. It's now got a u cubed with respect to u. Perfect, the letters now match up. So the answer is going to be a third. And how do we integrate this? Well, we increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, and then plus c. But what we need for our final answer is this 3x plus 4 back in place of u. So it's going to be 1 over 12, because the 3 and the 4 on the bottom there uh, multiply together to make 12. And then 3x plus 4, all to the power of 4 plus c. So there we are. That's how we do integration by substitution. We take basically the inside function of our integral. In this case, it was 3x plus 4. Replace that with the letter u. And then we also need to change the dx letter on the end by differentiating our substitution. Uh, replace it with du somehow. It might be a scale factor multiplier of du or something like that. And then integrate and then replace u back in at the end. Let's move on to the next one. So in this case here, it's going to be a substitution of u equals 2x minus 9. So we're going to be integrating the square root of u dx. But we can't just uh, differentiate, so integrate the square root of u with respect to x. We need to differentiate our substitution. So our Differential is going to be du by dx equals 2. And then rearranging this, we get half du equals dx. So the square root of u, I'm going to rewrite that as u to the power of a half, because uh, that is uh, the equivalent as an indice. And then it's going to be a half. We'll skip, multiply the scale factor of a half to the front, and then times by du. So start the integration now, increase the power by 1, so it's now going to turn into 3 over 2. Divide by the new power, that's going to make it 2 thirds plus c. But then we're going to substitute our, uh, our u back in for 2x minus 9. So it's going to be 1 third 2x minus 9 to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. So I've multiplied the half and the 2 thirds together and that gave me just 1 third. Moving on to the next one, it's on the bottom of a, uh, a fraction, but that doesn't really matter. In this case, the substitution is going to be u equals 3x minus 7. So what are we going to be integrating? We're going to be integrating instead 1 over the square root of u. Whoops, square root of u, dx. But this dx needs replacing, so we'll differentiate the substitution to 3, and then rearrange it a little bit, so it's a third du equals dx. So now we'll replace dx with the third du, so it's going to be integral of u to the minus a half times one third du. 
And now we're going to start the integration. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, so it increases to a half. Dividing by a half gives you 2, close brackets, plus C. And then bringing the uh, U back in, it's going to be 3x minus 7 to the power of a half, plus C. We could write that as a square root, but it's fine as it is. Moving on to the next one, okay, same thing again, it's going to be u equals 4 minus 3x. So starting the integration off, it's going to be the square root of u dx. We need this dx replacing, so we'll differentiate our substitution. That's going to give us minus 3, and then when we rearrange this, it's going to give us dx equals minus a third du. So we'll factorise that minus a third out to the front. That's going to be the integral of u to the half du. So let's start the integration now. It's going to be increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. That's going to make it 2 over 3. And then plus c. And then simplify and bring back in the u substitution. So it's going to be 4 minus 3x to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. Lovely, there we are. So that's the answer. Moving on to the next one, <clears throat> same again, u equals 7 minus 2x. So the integral here is going to be this 1 over the square root of u dx. But this dx needs replacing, so it's going to be du over dx equals minus 2. It's then going to become minus 1 over 2 du equals dx. So replacing that, factorising the minus half out to the front, it's going to be u to the power of minus a half du. And then it's going to be uh, applying the integration now. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. So it's going to be minus the square root of 7 minus 2x <coughs> plus c. Because the 2 and the minus half will cancel out at the front. And yet we've just got a square root. Moving on to the next one. Same again, hopefully you're getting familiar with these now. u equals 4x four minus, minus 3. So the integral is going to be u to the power of 3 over 2 dx. This dx needs replacing, so it's going to be du by dx equals 4, differentiating our substitution. And then rearrange a little bit, so it's going to be dx equals 1 quarter du. So now we're going to replace dx with a quarter du. Let's multiply that quarter right to the front, and it's going to be u to the power of 3 over 2 du. Then we're going to do the integration, so increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, and then plus c. So this is going to be uh, 1 over 10, and then replace the u back in, 4x minus 3 to the power of 5 over 2 plus c. Good, moving on to the next one. Okay, a little bit more tricky this one. We're still going to be using the substitution of what's inside the bracket to the power of 5. We don't really fancy expanding that bracket to the power of 5. So it's going to be uh, u equals uh, 3x squared plus 7. So uh, the x at the front is still going to remain at the front. We can't pull the x out outside the integral because it's the letter x. We can only pull scale factors, numbers, out to the front of the bracket. And then it's going to be u to the power of 5 dx. OK, now don't worry too much about this x at the front. For now, we're going to sort out the dx first. So it's going to be du by dx equals 6x. Rearrange this and we get dx equals 1 over 6x du. So let's replace dx with what dx is equal to. It's going to be x u to the 5, 1 over 6x, dx, and what, so du. And what you can see happening here is that this x and this x will cancel each other out. So then our integral turns into 1 over 6 integral u to the 5, du. Okay, so what we've seen happen here is that this x at the front of the integral was cancelled out when we changed this part of the integral dx into du. So sometimes you'll get things nicely matching up that cancel each other out for your um, 
so to make it convenient for you. Let's now do the integration. It's going to be 1 over 6 bracket increase power by 1, divide by the new power, plus C, and then bring in the U back in. So it's going to be 1 over 36 bracket 3x squared plus 7 to the power of 6 plus C. So there we are. That's the answer. Moving on to the next one, and something similar will happen again here. It's going to be a substitution of u equals the square, so u equals 3x squared minus 8. So when we put it into the integral, it's going to be x square root of u dx. Let's now sort out the dx first. So this is now going to turn into du by dx equals differentiating this thing here again will be 6x and rearranging it dx is going to turn into 1 over 6x du. Okay, so let's now plug that into the integral. It's going to be x times the square root of u dx, and we'll replace dx with 1 over 6x du. And you can see here this x at the front and this x towards the back will cancel out. So it turns into the integral of u to the half du. 1 sixth will get moved to the front. So let's now do the integration. It's going to be u to the power of 3 over 2 divided by the new power plus c. But now we need to bring back in u and simplify our fraction. It's going to be 2 over 18 or 1 over 9. Bracket 3x squared minus 8 all to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. Lovely, there we are. Moving on to the next one, again very similar this question, u equals 5 minus 2x squared. So let's now replace this into the integral, it's going to be x square root of u dx. Let's sort out the dx first uh, in this question, so du by dx equals minus 4x. Rearrange this, you get dx equals minus 1 over 4x du. So let's now replace it in. It's going to be x times the square root of u times by minus 1 over 4x du. This x on the top and this x on the bottom will cancel. So pull the minus quarter out to the front. So it's minus quarter integral u to the half du. Let's now do the integration. So it's going to be u increase the power by 1 divide by the new power, um, and then it's going to be plus c. And then we need to expand the brackets and put u back in, so that's going to give us minus 1 over 6, and it's going to be bracket 5 minus 2x squared, all to the power of 3 over 2, plus c. Good, moving on to the next one. Once again, very similar, it's going to be u equal to the thing inside the square root bracket, 4x squared minus 3. So the integral here is going to be x over the square root of u, dx. Let's sort out the dx first, so in differentiate your substitution. That's going to give us 8x, and then rearrange it, we're going to have dx equals 1 over 8x du. So, replace dx with this expression here, x over the square root of u times by 1 over 8x du. This x on the top and this x on the bottom cancel out. So it's 1 over 8 integral u to the minus half du equals 1 over 8 times by, and then we're integrating this thing now, increase the power by 1 divide by the new power, plus c, and now put the u uh, thing back in, so it's going to be 1 quarter, bracket 4x squared minus 3, to the bracket, uh, all to the power of a half, plus c, you could put a square root around that as well, perfectly acceptable. Moving on to the next one, so very similar, u equals 3 minus 7x squared, that's going to be our substitution, so it's going to be the integral of x over u cubed dx. Let's replace dx with um, 
well, by substituting, by differentiating this substitution. So it's going to be du by dx equals minus 14x. Rearrange this a little bit and you get dx equals minus 1 over 14x du. So putting this into the uh, different, it's like putting this into the integral, x over u cubed times minus 1 over 14x du. x is on top and bottom cancel out. So it's going to be minus 1 over 14 integral u to the minus 3 du. So that's going to be equal to minus 1 over 14 and then it's going to be increased power by 1 divide by the new power let's see so it's going to be positive 1 over 28 uh, and then it's going to be bringing u back in 3 minus 7x squared um, to the power of minus 2 let's see right so jumping onto this uh, this pretty tricky question here now uh, it looks like we've got cos but sine is in a bracket where the cube where it's cubed so uh, what we'll do then is we'll use sine as our substitution we're going to replace sine x with the letter u uh, reason i've chose sine rather than cos is because the sine function is being cubed um, so i'll need to put that uh, as a substitution so it's going to be integral cos x and then it's going to be u cubed dx okay let's see what happens now when we work out dx so it's going to be du by dx equals cos rearrange this and you get dx equals 1 over cos you can see what's going to happen here du so this is going to be in equal to the integral of cos x u cubed and then replace dx with this term over here 1 over cos x du so cancel out cos from top and bottom and you've got the integral of u cubed du and now we can integrate this it's going to be 1 quarter u to the power of 4 plus c so it's going to be 1 over 4 sine x to the power of 4 plus c but generally we would rewrite this as a quarter sine to the power of 4 x plus c so there we are that's the answer to this question moving on to the next one we'll do something similar we've got a choice out of cos or sine as our substitution but the sine one's inside a square root so we'll choose that one so it's going to be u equals sine x as our substitution and then it's going to be the integral of cos x um, times the square root of u dx. Let's now differentiate our substitution. So it's going to be um, cos x. So then uh, it's going to be dx equals 1 over cos x. And you can see what's going to happen here. The cos is going to cancel out again du, so this is going to be equal to the integral of cos x square root of u times 1 over cos x du cancel out cos is from top and bottom and you get the integral of u to the power of a half du, perfect, we can now integrate this 2 thirds uh, u to the power of 3 over 2 plus c so this is going to be 2 thirds bracket sine x to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. And there we are, that's the answer to this uh, question. Moving on to the next one. Okay, so we've got a choice now out of uh, sine x as a substitution or cos x minus 4. It's inside a square root, this cos x minus 4, so that's going to be our substitution. u equals cos x minus so the integral is going to be sine x times the square root of u dx let's now replace the dx with uh, something to do with du by our substitution so differentiating our substitution we get minus sine x and now rearranging this we get dx equals minus 1 over sine x 
du. So let's now replace it over here. So it's sine x square root of u and then times by this expression here minus 1 over sine x du. Cancel out the sine x from top and bottom and I'll factorize out the negative symbol to the front as well. And now we can integrate this, it's going to be minus 2 thirds u to the 3 over 2 plus c. And this is going to be equal minus 2 thirds, we'll put the, um, the u back in, it's going to be cos x minus 4 to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. Good, so there we are, that's the answer to this question. Moving on to the next one. Okay, so we have sine x or we have cos cubed. Now the cos is being cubed, so that's the one I'm going to set equal to my um, substitution u. So it's going to be the integral of sine x over u cubed dx. Then we'll need to replace the dx, so differentiate the substitution. du by dx equals uh, minus sine x. Then rearranging this a little bit, dx is equal to minus 1 over sine x du. So let's now replace dx with that term over there. So it's going to be dx now, so times it by this expression here, minus 1 over sine x du. So cancel out sine x from top and bottom, and I'll factorize out that negative symbol to the front. U can be represented as u to the minus 3 du. So now we'll do the integration. It will be increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, plus c. So this one here is going to be a half. Uh, we'll replace u with cos, cos x to the power of minus 2 plus c. So therefore, simplifying this fully, it's going to be 1 over 2 cos squared x plus c. And there we are, that's the answer. Moving on to the next one. So in this case here, it's going to be sine of x squared times by x. This x squared is inside the brackets of the sine function, so what we'll do is we'll replace um, u with x squared. So now the integral is going to be a bit easier, it's just going to be sine of u, but we've still got this x at the front. You can imagine what's going to happen here. du by dx will integrate, will differentiate to 2x, rearranging dx to 1 over 2x du. So this is now going to be equal to x sine u, and then dx will replace dx with 1 over 2x du. So cancel out the x's uh, from the back and the front. So it's going to be the integral now of sine u. We'll factorize out that half to the front, du. And then integral of a half, sorry, integral of sine, well that's minus cos u plus c, so it's going to be minus a half cos, and then u was x squared before, so it's minus a half cos x squared. And there we are. Moving on to the next one, this one's going to be cos 5x cubed plus 6, so once again, whatever's inside the bracket, in this case it's the cos bracket, 5x cubed plus 6. Let's now substitute that in, so it's going to be x squared cos u dx. Let's replace the dx term now, so we differentiate our substitution. So this is going to give us 15x squared. Rearranging this, we get dx equals 1 over 15x squared du. So, replacing this into the substitution now, x squared cos u multiplied by dx, and dx is equal to this term here, 1 over 15x squared du. Cancel out the x squareds from the front and the back, and we get integral of 1 over 15 cos u du. The integral of cos is sine, so this is going to be sine u plus c, 
and then replace u with back what u was. It's going to be 1 over 15 sine 5x cubed plus 6 plus c. And lovely, there we are. That's the answer to this question. Moving on to the next one. x e to the x squared. So I know how to integrate e to the something, but not necessarily x squared. So what I'll do then is I'll replace u with that x squared thing that the e is being to the power of. So this is going to turn into the integral of x e to the u dx. Let's now replace this dx term. So it's going to be dx, du by dx. Differentiating the substitution equals 2x. And rearranging it, dx equals 1 over 2x du. So let's now replace the dx term with what it's equivalent to. So it's going to be x e to the u and then 1 over 2x du. Cancel out the x's from the front and the back, and you now get pull the power of so pull the factor of a half to the front, and it's e to the u du. When we integrate this, it's just going to stay as e to the u, but then plus c. So it's going to be a half e to the x squared uh, plus c. And there we are, that's the answer. Right, so moving on to the next one, we have the integral of x square root 2x minus 7. There's a little bit more to this question here. We've got an x outside the brackets, but you can't see that the derivative of the inside of the brackets will cancel this out. So there's going to be a little bit more to it. Let's go through the problem. So we're going to set u equal to 2x minus 7. So therefore, we're now working with the integral of x times the square root of u dx. And again, the next thing we do is we sort out the dx differentiate our substitution, so that gives us 2, and then it's dx equals 1 half du, so we'll replace the dx with a half du, so it's going to be x u to the power of a half, um, and then a half will go to the front because it's this half here, and then it's du. Okay, so now this is our integral, and what we've seen here is that this x hasn't been cancelled out when we've brought in the du. So we need some other way of dealing with this x. And the way we'll deal with it is we'll rearrange our substitution. We'll turn our substitution into u plus 7 divided by 2 equals x. And now we can substitute in u plus 7 divided by 2. So it's going to be 1 over 4, because I'm going to bring out this half to the front. Integral u plus 7 times u to the power of a half du. And now all of a sudden we've got uh, all of our integral in terms of u. So it needed an extra step, this one. It needed an extra step to change this x here for um, u plus 7 divided by 2. So let's now expand the brackets. It's going to be u to the power of 3 over 2 plus 7u to the half du. And now we'll integrate it, so it's going to be increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, plus increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, so that's going to be 14 over 3, <coughs> plus c. And then we'll leave that quarter at the front, I reckon, so it's going to be 1 quarter, and then it's going to be 2 fifths, and then we substitute u back in for 2x minus 7. 2x minus 7 to the power 5 over 2 plus 14 over 3 bracket 2x minus 7 to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. And there we are. You could expand the brackets if you wish to, uh, but there we are. That's the answer. So an extra step involved here. We had an x still left in our integral after replacing the dx for a du. So rearrange your substitution to get rid of it. Right, moving on to the next one, it's going to be sine 2x square root of cos x plus 3. So let's uh, start with setting the thing inside the square root equal to u. So this is going to be the integral of sine 2x, uh, u to the power of a half dx. And the next thing to do will be to swap out this dx. So it's du by dx equals minus sine x. And then we arrange this a little bit so we get dx equals minus 1 over 
sin x du. So when we put this in, let's write out this uh, double angle formula. So it's 2 sin x cos x for this uh, sine double angle identity. u to the power of a half times by, and then this expression here for the dx part, minus 1 over sin x du. And we can see here we're going to have the sines cancel out. But we're still going to have this cos expression. Um, let's make it minus 2. We have, still have this cos expression inside the integral. So cos x, u to the power of a half, du. So there's minus 2 at the front there. So how do we get rid of this cos x? Well, we're going to have to rearrange our substitution. We'll turn it into u minus 3 equals cos x. And then we'll replace cos with u minus 3. And now perfect. This is uh, now an integral where it's just u. So expand the brackets. 3 over 2 minus 3u to the half du. And then uh, do the integration. And I'll put uh, cos x plus 3 back in because I'm running out of space here. So it's going to be... Um, 2 over 5, bracket, cos x plus 3, all to the power of 5 over 2, minus, it's going to be 3 over 2, so uh, 2, bracket, cos x plus 3, to the power of 3 over 2, and then that's all plus c. Lovely, so there we are. That's the answer to this question here. Pretty tricky one, this one. It involved a lot of the stages of uh, integration by substitution, including replacing a, um, not rearranging your substitution to replace a cos when you've already replaced dx with du. Right then, moving on to the next one. So we have this uh, integral here. What the first thing we'll do is we'll replace u with x minus 2, the inside of the bracket there. So it's going to be x squared then it's going to be u to the power of minus a half dx. Now we need to replace the dx, so it's going to be du by dx equals 1, so therefore du is exactly equal to dx. So we'll just replace directly du, dx with du. And now what we need to do is we need to get rid of this x squared. So what I'll do is I'll rearrange my substitution so I'll get x equals u plus 2. And now it's going to be the integral of u plus 2, u to the power of minus a half, oh, oops, the u plus 2 needs to be squared, du. OK, the best thing we can do now is just expand the brackets here. So it would be u squared plus 4u plus 4 times by u to the power of minus a half, du. And let's now expand the brackets with this u to the minus half. So it would be u to the 3 over 2 plus 4u to the half plus 4u to the minus half du. Uh, so let's carry on up here. So integrating each one in turn now, it's going to be uh, 2 over 5 u to the 5 over 2 plus increase power by 1 to 3 over 2 and then divide by this new power, 8 over 3. And then last one, increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, to make it 8, and then plus c. Then our final answer is just going to have u replaced with x minus 2. So 2 over 5, x minus 2 to the power of 5 over 2, plus 8 over 3, x minus 2 to the power of 3 over 2, plus 8, lots of x minus 2, to the power of one half plus c. And there we are, that's the answer to this integral. Moving on to the next one, sine cubed brackets sine square rooted x. So in the, both the cases here, they both have uh, something in, so they both have a power. Cos has a cubed, sine has a square root. And in this case, the square root is going to trump the cubing. Because what I could probably do is that when this gets differentiated, one of the cos's will cancel out and I'll get cos squared, and then I can replace it with 1 minus sine squared afterwards. 
So let's set u equal to sine x. And the integral is going to be cos cubed. And it's going to be the square root of u. So u to the half. Now we need to replace the dx with a du. So we do that by differentiating our substitution. And we get dx is equal to 1 over cos x du. Right, so now putting this into the integral, it's going to be cos cubed x u to the half times by dx, and that's equal to 1 over cos x du. So one of the coses will cancel out, and I'll be left with cos squared, so it's going to be the integral of cos squared x u to the power of a half du. And now I need to replace cos squared x in terms of sine squared. Well, we all know that cos squared is the same as 1 minus sine squared, so that's how we're going to do it. So, replacing sine with u now, it's going to be 1 minus u squared times u to the half du. So, moving up here now, expand the brackets, it's going to be u to the half minus u to the 3 over 2, no, 5 over 2, du. And now do the integration and replace sine back in, so it's increase the power by 1, so it's sine x to the power of 3 over 2, divide by new power, minus sine x to the power of 7 over 2, divide by the new power, 2 over 7, plus c. And there we are, that's the answer to this integral. <coughs> Moving on to the next one, 8x over 2x minus 3. So let's set u equal to 2x minus 3. And this is going to be the integral of 8x over u to the power of a half, dx. Let's now replace dx with du by differentiating the substitution. So dx is equal to 1 half du. <clears throat> so this is going to be equal to 8x, u to the power of minus a half, because when you bring it from the bottom of a fraction, the power now is negative, and then it's times a half uh, du. So we've got an x here still, so how are we going to get rid of this x term? Well, what we'll do is we're going to replace x with the rearrangement of the substitution, u plus 3 over 2 equals x. So bringing the coefficients to the front, 8 and a half will give us 4 at the front. Then it's going to be, uh, well, 4 over 2, because I'm going to bring this half to the front here, u plus 3, u to the minus half, du. Simplify the coefficient on the front and expand the brackets, u to the half plus 3u to the minus half du. And then do the integration, so it's going to be two brackets, u to the power of 3 over 2, times 2 over 3, plus u to the power of a half, times 6. Uh, and then plus c, and the final thing we need to do is just replace u with 2x plus 3, so it's going to be two bracket, 2 over 3, 2x minus 3, all to the power of 3 over 2, plus 6, bracket, 2x minus 3, to the power of 1 half, plus c. So there we are. That's our answer. Moving on to the next one. Cot x cosec to the power of 4x. OK, so what we need to remember here is that if we differentiate cosec, we get minus cosec x cot x. So what this means is we effectively need to look at this integral from this perspective. Cot x cosec x times by cosec x cubed. 
And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be leaving this at the front because this will eventually be cancelling out and we're going to be substituting cosec for u. So the substitution here is going to be u equals cosec. We're not going to put it into this cosec, we're going to leave that cosec alone because let's do it straight away, when we replace dx with du we're going to get minus cosec x cot x so therefore dx is going to be minus 1 over cosec x cot x du so that will then cancel out the cot cosec at the front and we'll just be left with minus u to the power of 3. So let's do that. So we'll replace it in. Let's write it all out. Let's just divide off that side of the screen. So it's going to be cot x cosec x times u to the power of 3 times by dx which is minus 1 over cosec x cot x uh, du. So let's cancel out the cot cosec, cot cosec. It's going to have a minus on the front of the integral, u cubed du. So let's now do the integration. It's going to be uh, u to the 4 times a quarter plus c. And then substituting in the u back in, so it's going to be cosec to the power of 4x plus c. And there we are, that's the answer. So a little bit tricky this one, we had to pull out one of the cosecs from inside this cosec to the power of 4 uh, to get this cosec cubed. The reason we had to do that was because when you differentiate cosec and you work out the dx replacing with the du, it will actually cancel out one of the cosecs as well. Moving on to the next one. 2x uh, minus 5, all square rooted with x cubed on the top. So roughly the same as what we've seen a lot of before. 2x minus 5 is our substitution. So it's going to be x cubed u to the minus half dx. Let's now replace dx with uh, du by rearranging and differentiating our substitution. So it's going to be a half du. So we'll bring that half to the front, and it's going to be the integral of x cubed um, u to the minus half du. And now we don't know how to integrate so with this uh, x cubed still in there, so we'll have to rearrange our substitution to get rid of it. So u plus 5 over 2 equals uh, x. So in this case here, it's going to be u plus 5 over 2 all cubed u to the minus half du. Well, you can imagine the number that's going to expand on the bottom. It's going to be uh, 2 cubed, which is 8. So I'll bring that 8 to the front and we'll call it 1 16th at the front because there's already one of the halves at the front. And then we've got u plus 5 cubed u to the minus half du. So we'll just have to expand this big bracket. So it's going to be u cubed plus, and then it's going to be 15u squared plus 15u plus, 20, uh, plus 125. Uh, no, that's not going to be 15, is it? That's going to be um, 25 times 3, 75. Okay, if you're wondering how I did that so quickly, I've just done the binomial expansion uh, kind of in my head, but then all of this needs to be then times by u to the minus half du. So let's expand the brackets now of this. So it's going to be <coughs> u cubed times u to the minus half. That would be u, that's a 6 over 2, take away a half, so that's 5 over 2, plus 15u to the power of 3 over 2, plus 75 uh, u to the half um, and then plus 125 u to the minus half du. So I think I'm running out of space here a little bit so I'm going to jump straight to the answer. 1 over 16 <clears throat> and then we need to increase the power by 1 
but on 2x minus 5, so that would be 7 over 2, divided by the new power of 2 over 7, plus, and then it's going to be 2x minus 5, increase power by 1 to 5 over 2, and then divide by the new power, so that would be 2 over 5, uh, that's going to cancel out with the top there, so it's going to be 6, plus, and then it's going to be 2x minus 5, increase this power by 1 to 3 over 2, divide by the new power, that's going to make it 50, and then the final one is going to be plus 2x minus 5 to the power of a half, divide by the new power, that'll make it 250. And there we are, that's the final answer to this question. We were tough on that one, had to expand a lot of brackets. Right, moving on to the next one, this one is going to be e to the x minus 3, uh, with e to the 3x on the top. So we're going to make e to the x minus 3 our subject, and then we're going to replace it into our integral. So it's going to be e to the 3x over u dx. The next thing we need to do is replace dx with du. So that will make this dx equals 1 over e to the x du. So let's put that in. So it's going to be e to the 3x, u to the uh, minus 1, and then it's going to be times 1 over e to the x du. So we're going to cancel out one of these e to the x's, but we've still got two of these e to the x's left on the top. This is what we've got so far. So what we need to do is we need to rearrange our substitution. So we're going to rearrange it to u plus 3 equals e to the x. And if we want e to the 2x, then we're just going to have to square both sides. So in this case here, it's going to be the integral of e, u plus 3 squared u to the minus 1 du. So let's expand the brackets fully now. It's going to be u squared, but times it out by the u minus 1. It will just make it u. Then it's going to be 6u, but times it out by the minus 1, and you'll get plus 6. And then it will be 9, but times it out with the u minus 1, and you get u, 9u to the minus 1 du. So moving now on to the integration stage, the answer is going to be um, a half u squared plus 6u. And then it would be, oh, this here, that's a 9 over u, so that's going to be plus 9 ln u. On this one, you don't increase power by 1 divided by the new power because you'd be dividing by 0, so you have to go to a ln plus c. Okay, so now substituting back in e to the x minus 3, so it would be half e to the x minus 3 squared plus 6 e to the x minus 3 plus 9 ln e to the x minus 3 uh, plus c. There's no way you can split up this ln e to the x minus 3, um, so that's just our final answer. Great, moving on to the next one, sine square root of x over square root of x. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll simplify the inside of this sine function. We'll make u equal the square root of x, or x to the half. So, let's substitute this in. Let's substitute it in both places. It might cancel out, but let's just see what happens. Sine u over u dx. So, let's now replace dx with du. So it's uh, times to the front, reduce the power by 1. And then if we rearrange this, we're going to get dx equals 2 square root of x uh, du. But remember, the square root of x was u, so we could also say that this is 2u du. So let's substitute it in. It's going to be sine u over u times 2u du. So this is going to be equal to, cancel out the u's from top and bottom, 2 times sine u du. Sine integrates to cos, so it's going to be minus 2 cos u plus c. So this is going to be minus 2 
um, cos square root x plus c. And there we are, that's the answer. <clears throat> Moving on to the next one, sine e to the power of cos x. Uh, so we'll make this uh, cos e, make this power on e more simple, so we'll replace u with cos x. And then we'll do integration by substitution, so it's going to be sine x, hopefully this sine will cancel out at some point, e to the u, dx. Let's replace dx with du by differentiating our substitution. This will now be minus sine x. So rearranging it, you get dx equals minus 1 over sine x, du. <clears throat> so our integral is therefore going to be sine x e to the u times by minus 1 over sine x. So the sine x will cancel out as I expected there and there. So it's minus the integral of e to the u du. So this is equal to minus e to the u plus c, because e integrates to itself. But then bring the u substitution back in, so it's going to be e to the cos x plus c. Great, moving on to the next one. e to the x sine e to the x. Well, let's just see what happens. Let's replace the inside of the sine function with e to the x. So our integral is now u sine u dx. So e to the x appears in two places, that's why it needs to be uh, replaced in two places. Let's now turn the dx into a du, so du by dx equals e to the x. <clears throat> so therefore dx is equal to 1 over e to the x du. But 1 over, so e to the x is equal to u, so it's going to be 1 over u du. So this is going to be equal to the integral of u sine u times by 1 over u du. Cancel out the u's in both places. So it's now going to be the integral of sine u du, uh, which is going to be equal to minus cos of u plus c. And therefore, it's going to be minus cos, bringing the u back in, e to the x plus c. And there we are, that's the answer. Moving on to the next one, the square root of 2x squared minus 1, all square rooted, uh, with 4x cubed on the top. So let's make 2x squared minus 1 our u value for substitution. So it's now going to be the integral of 4x cubed over the square root of u dx. First thing we need to do is replace this dx, so it's going to be done by differentiating the substitution. So that's 4x, then we need to rearrange this to get dx equals 1 over 4x du. So this is going to equal 4x cubed u to the minus half times by 1 over 4x du. So the 4s will cancel, and one of the x's will cancel from top and bottom, so we're left with x squared u to the minus half du. So how do we now get rid of this x squared? Well, we'll have to look back at our substitution. It's going to be u plus 1 over 2 that's equal to x squared. So we'll substitute x squared with u plus 1 divided by 2. So we'll bring out that factor of half to the front. u plus 1 in brackets, u to the minus half, du. Open up the brackets, half integral u to the half plus u to the minus half, du. Let's now move up to the top here, let's now integrate, so leaving that half at the front, increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, and then plus 2u to the half plus c, and then bring back in the value for u, so it's going to be half times by 2 thirds, and then u is 2x squared minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2, plus 2 lots of 2x squared minus 1, all to the power of a half, 
plus C. Lovely. So there we are. That's uh, that's our question here uh, complete. Right then, so let's have a go at this question here. So it's the integral of sine 2x over 3 plus cos x. So once again, we're going to be setting u equal to 3 plus cos x, that denominator. So it's then going to turn into the integral of sine 2x uh, u to the minus 1 dx. And the next thing we do is we replace the dx term with a du term by differentiating our substitution. This will differentiate to minus sine x. So therefore dx is equal to minus 1 over sine x du. So let's replace that in. And while I replace it in, I'm going to expand this double angle formula here. 2 sine x cos x. That's what the double angle formula is. Then it's u to the minus 1. And then it's times by minus 1 over sine x du. So the sine term cancels out top and bottom. But it does mean I've still got a cos term inside my bracket. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to rearrange my substitution and say that therefore cos x equals u minus 3. <clears throat> so what I'll now do is I'll factorise the 2 out to the front. It's going to be u minus 3 times u to the minus 1 du. And there we are. We have a perfectly good integral that we can now solve. We've had to change dx into du and cancel out sine. But we've also had to do a bit of rearranging to put cos as u minus 3. So expand the brackets. It's going to be whoops, u times u to the inverse. It's just 1 minus 3u to the minus 1 du. So the answer to this integral is going to be 2 lots of, integrate 1, you just get u, and then 3 to the u minus 1, that's the same as 3 over u, which is equal to 3 ln u. That plus c. And the final thing we need to do is just put u back into the equation, so it's going to be 2 bracket 3 plus cos x minus 3 ln 3 plus cos x. Uh, plus c. So there we are. That's the answer to this question here. Moving on to the next one. Sine, sorry, cos x sine x times 1, square root of 1 plus sine x. So we'll set that square root equal to the u value. So 1 plus sine x equals u. Now we'll start the integral, it's going to be cos x sine x times u to the power of a half uh, dx. The next thing we need to do is replace dx with a du term, so we'll differentiate our substitution, we'll get cos, so therefore dx is equal to 1 over cos x du. So let's carry on. It's going to be cos x sine x u to the power of a half and then dx gets replaced with 1 over cos x du. So the cos x terms will cancel out and sine turns into u minus 1. So it's going to be u minus 1 u to the half du. Expand the brackets now, and we're nearly there with this integral. u to the 3 over 2 minus u to the half du. Now we do the integration. 2 over 5 u to the 5 over 2 minus 3, so 2 over 3 u to the 3 over 2 plus c. And the final thing we need to do is we need to substitute in our substitution. So it's 2 over 5 bracket 1 plus sine x 5 over 2 minus 2 thirds bracket 1 plus sine x to the 3 over 2 plus c. And there we are, that's the answer to this question. Moving on to the next one. Sine cubed. 
Okay, so sine cube is actually a pretty tricky one. You have to do a little bit of work with sine cube before you get started. We're going to integrate sine x times sine squared, and we know that sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. Then we expand the brackets. Then we split up into two separate integrals. One, the first one, that's super easy, the integral of sine, but that's just minus cos. And then the second one here is a little bit more tricky that needs to be done by uh, different, by um, substitution. So the first integral, that's just going to be minus cos x uh, plus c. But we'll leave the plus c for the second integral. And then it's going to be minus... Well, let's substitute in u equal to cos, because that has the squared term on it. So therefore, this is going to be the integral of, well, let's change the dx into a du as well. The differential of cos is minus sine. And then dx is going to be equal to minus 1 over sine x du. So therefore, this turns now into a minus, so the minus at the front will turn into a plus. The signs will cancel top and bottom, uh, u squared du. So it's going to be minus cos x plus 1 third. We're now integrating this. Increase power by 1, divide by new power. Third cos x cubed plus c. And there we are. That's the answer to this question. So we had to split sine cubed up into sine times sine squared. We know that sine squared is 1 minus cos squared, so we use that. Then we expanded the brackets with the sine. The first integral was nice and easy. So integral of sine is just minus cos. And for the second part, we used integration by substitution, replaced u with cos, and then it turned into um, this answer here. If you didn't get that one straight away, then have a go at this one, doing it in a very similar way. I'll start to have a go at it now. What we do here is we split this up into cos x and then 1 minus sine squared dx. Let's expand the brackets, so it's going to be cos x minus cos x sine squared x dx. So uh, let's now split them up into two separate integrals. It's going to be cos x dx. We know the integral of that. That's nice and easy. And then the integral of cos x sine squared x dx. So the integral of cos is sine x. And then what we'll do here is we'll do integration by substitution. u is equal to sine x. We need to also replace the dx with a du term, so let's differentiate. And therefore dx is going to be equal 1 over cos x du. So the cos x will cancel out uh, one, in the one in the du term, one inside the integral. So it's going to be the integral of u squared du sine x. So it's therefore going to be minus 1 over 3, increase the power by 1, divide by a new power, sine cubed x plus c. And there we are, that's the answer. So it's sine x minus 1 over 3, it's sine cubed x plus c. Moving on to the final one for this section, and this one's more of an extension question than a standard A-level question, but let's have a look at it anyway. I suppose the standard technique will be to do u equals 1 minus x squared, and then it's going to be the integral of u to the power of minus a half, change the dx into a du, so differentiate our substitution, so dx is therefore equal to 1 minus, so minus 1 over 2x du. So times this by minus 1 over 2x, I'll put the minus at the front, uh, du. So generally what we do now is now that there's an x in our integral still, even after the du has appeared, we 
change, uh, rearrange the formula of this uh, expression here. It's not going to look pretty. It's going to be x equals 1 minus u. Uh, and this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. It's going to be 1 over the square root of x times 1 over the square root of 1 minus u du. And, well, that does not look like it's made it simpler. So we're not going to use this strategy. We're actually going to use a strategy that makes the integral harder to start with, but then it does make it easier later on. The substitution we're going to use is x equals sine theta. And why are we doing that? It seems as if when we put sine theta in for x, it would actually make it more difficult. But if you look at what we've got here now, it's 1 minus sine squared x, and 1 minus sine squared x is just cos squared. We've then got the square root of cos squared, which is just cos. So actually, this thing here just simplifies to 1 over cos. I've spotted a trig identity inside my um, bracket, inside my square root on the denominator, uh, and I can use 1 minus sine squared. But once again, the dx needs replacing, so dx by d theta is cos theta. And this doesn't need much in the way of uh, rearranging dx is now just cos theta d theta. So I'm now going to replace this with cos theta d theta on the side. So once I've done my simplification inside the bracket here, this is going to be 1 minus sine squared theta. That will simplify to cos squared, but then the square root of cos squared is just cos times by cos theta d theta. Actually, what I've ended up with is just the integral of 1 d theta. And the integral of 1 is just the letter plus c. And now I need to bring in my substitution. Well, I've got sine theta equals x. So it therefore must be the case that if I do it down here, um, theta equals sine inverse or arc sine x. We're just uh, moving the sine onto the other side of the uh, equation here, um, instead of the formula, and it'll be arc sine on the other side. So, replacing theta with its uh, substitution, it's going to be arc sine x plus c. So that's quite an interesting one I found. I thought I'd include it in the set of questions for you, just to see who's seen it. It's probably not going to be a standard A-level question, further maths question, definitely, but uh, I thought I'd just show you just for fun. Okay, so we've done a lot of questions to do with integration by substitution. We're going to look at a new rule now. It's the rule of integration by parts. So in this case here, it's very similar to the product rule for differentiation, but it's a product rule for integration, basically. It's a little bit more difficult, though. So what happens is you take two functions that are being multiplied together. In this case, we'll label them with u. And this time, we have to label it with dv by dx. And then with one of the functions, we differentiate it. And with the other function, we integrate it. So this is what it is equal to then on the right hand side. It's that original u function times the integrated dv by dx to v minus the integral of that integrated dv by dx function v times by the differentiated u function du by dx. So you get two parts in your answer. You get the first part, which is just u times v. And then the second part, which is an integral you then need to work out. So it turns one integral into something minus another integral. But hopefully, by the time you've gone from the left integral to the right integral, this right-hand integral is going to be easier than it was to start with. Let's show you an example. In this case here, we have x sine x dx. And we're going to be using the integration by parts rule. This integration by parts rule is in the formula booklet, so you don't need to remember it. Just have it beside you as you work through these questions. So what we're going to do is we're going to be, I'll show you why afterwards, but we're going to be setting this one equal to u and this one here equal to dv by dx. And the shorthand notation for that is just v with a dash. So u is equal to x, so therefore du by dx is equal to 1. 
and you can see when the different when the integration moves from this left hand side to the right hand side the du by dx because du by dx is just one it's going to be a much easier integral on the right hand side so if you've ever got any x x squared x cubed you want to be differentiating those to make them easier easier by one each time you differentiate it and then the second one is v dash equals sine x Now that means the differential of v so if I'm to go back to v, I need to integrate. So this one here got differentiated, and this one on the bottom here gets integrated. So the integral of sine is minus cos. And now we can put it into the integration by parts rule. So it's going to be u times v, so that's going to be x times minus cos x. take away the integral of v, that's minus cos, so I'll turn the minus at the front to a plus and then say cos, times by du by dx, which is just 1, so I don't need to really write anything there, dx. And there we are, you can see what's happened here, we've turned this integral, the integral of x sine x, dx, into this integral here, by using the integration by parts rule. We set the first part, the x term equal to u, the second term, sine in this case, equal to dv by dx. Differentiated one of them, we differentiated the x function because that makes it easier. If we were to integrate that one, it'd make it half x squared and that wouldn't make it easier at all. And then we integrated the sine one to give us this expression here. But that's not the answer because we still need to integrate this cos function. And the integral of cos we all know is sine, so it's sine plus c. So there we are, that's the answer to this question. Moving on to the next one now, x squared cos x. So this question is going to be a little bit longer, a little bit more difficult, but let's go through it. So we've got two functions that are being multiplied together. One of them is going to have to be labelled with u, one of them is going to have to be labelled with dv by dx. It's always the x term, generally always the x term, that is the u function, because when I differentiate it, it makes it easier. In this case, it's going to turn it to 2x. That's what u dash is referring to, it's representing du by dx, it's just a bit shorter to write it that way. And then the next one is v dash, which is cos... And with this term, it needs integrating to v equals sine x. So this term here turns into, let's go through the integration by parts rule bit by bit. u comes first, so that's going to be x squared. v comes second, which is sine x. Minus the integral of v. That's going to be sine x times du by dx, which is 2x. So it's going to be 2x sine x dx. Okay. Now what we're going to have to do next is do this integral. But we can't do this integral really because it's 2x times sine x. So we're have, going to have to use integration by parts again. So using integration by parts again... 2x we're going to label with u, and that will get differentiated to 2. The next part is sine, so that's going to be v dash equals sine. And then that's going to be integrated to minus cos. So it's still going to be the front term, that hasn't changed And then it's going to be take away the integration by parts rule used on this thing here. So it's going to be u, that's 2x, times by minus cos x, it's minus 2x cos x. And then the second part is going to be take away the integral of v times du by dx, the last two here. So it's 2, the minus will move that to the front, so it's plus cos x dx 
close bracket. So I think what would be uh, sensible to do here first will be to expand the brackets. So minus minus 2 cos x is plus 2x cos x. And it's going to be minus this integral. And the final step will be to integrate the thing on the end. We now can integrate 2 cos x. We can move the 2 to the front. We'll keep the 2 inside. So it's going to be minus 2 sine x. The integral of cos is sine plus c. So there we are. That question did take quite a long time. The reason, the reason it took a long time is because there was an x squared in here, and that meant we had to do the integration by parts rule twice through. Once to differentiate it to 2x, a second time to differentiate it to uh, 2. Okay, so sometimes you do have to do this process twice. I've never seen it happen three times, but you can imagine what would be the case for that. It will be x cubed that will be the... Um, the term in front of the cos, sine, or e, or whatever it needs to be. Right then, moving on to the next one. This one is x e to the x. So we're going to be using the integration by parts rule. And it's going to be u is still going to be x, and this time v dash is going to be e to the x. So the u needs to be differentiated. We we'll differentiate that to 1. And the e to the x term needs to be integrated to e to the x. So let's get started on our integration by parts rule. The first part of it is just u times v. So that's going to be x times e to the x. Without any integral sign around it. Then we take away the integral of v, which is e to the x, times du by dx, which is 1. So that's really just the integral of e to the x. And then we can integrate e to the x. That's just e to the x. And then it's uh, plus c. So there we are. That's the answer. So what the integration by parts rule does is it turns one integral into something, x e to the x, minus an easier integral for you to calculate. In this case, it was just the integral of e to the x, much more straightforward than x e to the x. Moving on to the next one, ah, we see an x squared term here. So that probably means we're going to have to do integration by parts twice. So let's get started on the first one. It's going to be u equals x squared and v dash equals e to the x. <clears throat> so we differentiate it once and we get u dash equals 2x and v gets integrated to e to the x. So let's now apply the integration by parts rule. It's u times v. That's x squared e to the x minus the integral of v, that's e to the x, times du by dx, which is 2x. So it's 2x e to the x dx. OK, so we still can't integrate this thing here, so we're going to have to do integration mode parts again. So 2x will be our u function because we want that differentiated, and we'll set the other function equal to the thing we want to be integrated. So u is equal to 2x, the differential of that is going to be 2, and v dash is going to equal e to the x, so that thing there is going to be differentiated, so integrated to e to the x. So it's going to be x squared e to the x minus, in brackets, the integration by parts rule. So it's going to be u times v, which is 2x e to the x minus the integral of v times by du by dx, 2e to the x. And that integral at the back there looks much more easier to integrate, so what we'll do is expand the brackets, minus 2xe to the x. Uh, the double negative will turn this last term into a plus, and then the integral of 2e to the x is just 2e to the x plus c. And there we are, that's the answer to this integral. <clears throat> okay, moving on to the next one, x ln x. Okay, so we need to use integration by parts. We have two parts on this thing here. 
So a sensible thing would to be to suggest that uh, u is equal to x, like we usually do, and v dash is equal to ln x. So u dash is going to turn into 1, and ln x gets integrated. Ah, we don't know how to integrate ln x yet. So we can't do it this way. We'll have to do it the other way. So u is going to equal ln x, because we know how to differentiate ln. Ln differentiates to 1 over x. So that means we're going to have to integrate x. So this is the only occasion when x is the term you're integrating. It's when there is a ln there, because you don't know how to integrate ln yet. So uh, we integrate v, so that's going to be v equals a half x squared. But I imagine when we combine v and du by dx, that term won't be so hard to integrate. Let's see what happens. So it's going to be the answer is going to be u times v, that's a half x squared ln x. Minus the integral of v times du by dx. So v is a half x squared, and then uh, u differentiated du by dx is 1 over x. But we could probably simplify the thing we're integrating. So bring the half out to the front, and x squared times 1 over x, so that's just x. So let's now do the integration. x integrates to x squared over 2, so it's going to be 1 quarter x squared plus c. So there we are, that's the answer to this question then. So it's usually u equals uh, x to the power of n, except, uh, except if u is equal to ln x. Okay, so the first thing you need to set u equal to is ln, then it's any algebra and then I think it goes trigonometry exponentials. Okay, so you can think of it as u is equal to late here. So it's uh, logarithms, algebra, trigonometry, exponentials. So there we are. Okay, moving on to the next one, ln x. <coughs> Interesting. Usually when we do integration by parts, we have something times something else. We don't have that here. Um, I suppose what we could say is this is 1, x, 1 ln x, so it's 1 times ln x, and that's how we're actually going to do this question here. We're going to be using integration by parts, where u is equal to ln, and v dash is going to be equal to uh, 1. Bit cheeky, but that's how you do it. So we're going to differentiate ln x, u dash is going to be equal to 1 over x, and v is going to be equal to x, because when you integrate to 1, you get x. So let's do, the, uh, let's do the answer now. So the answer goes to u times v, that's x times ln x. Minus the integral of v du by dx, so that's x times 1 over x. And let's simplify that integral inside the brackets there, that's actually just now down to the integral of 1. So it's x then x, and then the integral of 1, that's just x plus c. So there we are, that's the answer, it's x then x minus x. Okay, moving on to the next one, 3x cos 5x. So integration by parts, there's no logarithms here, so it's going to be the algebra piece that's equal to u, and then the trigonometry piece, that's going to be the piece we're integrating. So it's going to be u equals 3x. This needs differentiating, so it's u dash equals 3. And v dash is equal to cos 5x. And this piece here needs integrating, so that's equal to 1 over 5 sine x, sine 5x. 
So let's now apply the integration by parts rule. It goes u then times by v. So that's 3 over 5x sine 5x minus the integral of v times du by dx. So it's 3 over 5 again. So let's put the 3 over 5 on the front uh, times by uh, sine 5x. So it's integral of sine 5x. And now our integral is much more easier to calculate. So it's going to be 3 over uh, 25, because you'll have to divide by the 5 again when you integrate. Uh, sine integrates to minus cos, so it's going to be a plus cos 5x plus c. And there we are. That's the answer. OK, moving on to the next one. 7x e to the 4x. OK, well, let's split it up into 7x and e to the 4x as the two parts for the integration by parts rule. So the first term u is going to equal 7x. And the second term dv by dx, or v dash, is going to equal e to the 4x. So one gets differentiated, one gets integrated. 7x differentiates to 7 e to the 4x gets integrated to 1 over 4 e to the 4x. So then the answer, let's go through the integration by parts rule. It's u times v, that's 7 over 4x e to the 4x, <coughs> minus the integral of v times du by dx, that's a quarter e to the 4x times 7. So we'll factorise out that 7 over 4, e to the 4x, dx. And now that's a much easier integral to calculate inside the brackets. It's going to be 7 over 16, e to the 4x, plus c. So we've divided by the 4 here, but any, and then e integrates to itself. So there we are, that's the answer. <clears throat> Moving on to the next one, ln x over x to the uh, over x cubed. I'll rewrite this integral probably as ln x times x to the minus three. So remember when we use integration by parts, um, the first term, if there's a, if there's a log in there, that's the first term that gets set equal to uh, ln, so equal to u, because we know how to differentiate ln. The differential of ln is 1 over x. We could say that's x to the minus 1. So that means the other part of this function, x to the minus 3, it needs to be set equal to dv by dx, or v dash. So let's now integrate it. So it's increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. So it's minus 1 over 2, x to the minus 2. So let's start to go through the intuition by parts rule now. It's u times v, so that's going to be minus 1 over 2, x to the minus 2 ln x, minus the integral of, um, well, it's going to be minus a half, so actually that would turn into plus 1 half, if we put the minus half at the front of the bracket, x to the minus 2 times x to the minus 1, that's x to the minus 3, and that term there is easy enough to integrate. So the answer is minus a half x to the minus 2 ln x plus increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. So it's going to be minus 1 quarter x to the minus 2 plus c. And there we are. That's the answer to this integral. Great. OK, for the next couple of questions, we're going to be referring to this table of integrals here. It's in the formula booklet, so you don't need to memorise it. But we've got a bunch of integrals here. Sec squared goes to tan. Tan goes to ln sec. Cots goes to ln sine. Cosec goes to ln cosec x plus cot x minus it. And sec x goes to ln sec x plus tan x. Uh, if you want to check any of these, just differentiate the right-hand side and you'll get the left-hand side. So that's kind of how this is done. So let's move on to the next question then. It's x sec x tan x. So once again, we're going to be using the um, 
using the product, so using the integration by parts rule. And also, we've got this part of the differentiation part of the formula booklet, which tells us that sec x tan x integrates to sec x. So, in this question, we're going to be setting u equal to x. So, we then do u dash equals 1. And then it's going to be v dash equals sec x tan x. And then the, then the integral of this is going to be sec x. So let's now apply integration by parts. It's going to be equal to u times v. So that's going to be sec times x. That's x sec x. Take away the integral of v du by dx. That's sec x. And this is where we need that table of integrals uh, back one. So the integral of sec is equal to ln sec x tan x. So let's bring this back in. So the answer here is x sec x minus ln sec x tan x. Sec x plus tan x. Plus c, so there we are. That's the answer to this question here. Moving on to the next one, sine ln sec x. Right, okay, so a very difficult one here. We've got two components. We've got this component here and this component here. We need to think which one of these can we differentiate and which one can we integrate. Well, we can differentiate both of them. And we can only really integrate the sine x one. This one here would be a little bit more difficult to integrate. So we'll use the integration by parts rule and we'll set u equal to ln sec x. And then v dash equal to sine x. So sine integrates to minus cos. And then ln sec x is going to differentiate to, well, it's the derivative on the top. So that's sec. Uh, no, no, it's, uh, it's derivative on the top sec x tan x over the original function sec x. So this is equal to tan x. So we get the derivative here is tan x. So let's now apply the integration by parts rule. It's u times v. So that's minus cos ln sec minus the integral of v times du by dx, which is minus cos. So we change the plus to a negative. So we change the negative to a plus at the front and then times that by tan. Now we're using a little bit of uh, trig identities. We can simplify this integral. Tan is equal to sine over cos. So when you times that by cos, it's just the integral of sine. And that's a much more friendly integral to do. So it's going to be minus cos x ln sec x minus cos x. Lovely, there we are, that's the answer to this question. Moving on to the next one. Oh, we've got this integral uh, formula here, so it's going to be x sec squared, uh, so eventually we might need to use that. So, uh, let's use integration by parts. x is going to be our u, sec squared is going to be the thing we are integrating. So u equals x, v dash is equal to sec squared, so I know that the integral of sec squared is tan. And then differentiate x, you get 1. So this is going to be equal to u times v. So that's x tan x. Minus the integral of v du by dx, which is just 1 times tan. And then we can use this little table again to work out the integral of tan. The integral of tan is ln sec x. So it's ln sec x plus c. And there we are. That's the answer to this question. Great. Moving on to the next part. Ln 3x over x4. So I think I'll rewrite this as ln 3x 
times x to the minus 4. And ln gets priority for the u, so it's u equals ln 3x. And v dash is equal to x to the minus 4. So u dash is going to equal 1 over x, and v is going to equal increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, minus 1 over 3, x to the minus 3. So, let's use the integration by parts rule. It's going to be ln 3x times by v, so that's going to be minus over 3x cubed, and then minus the integral of uh, v du by dx, so that's going to be minus, I'll change that negative to a plus, one third, we'll move the third to the front, and then it's going to be 1 over x times x to the minus 3, which is x to the minus 4. So it's going to be minus ln 3x over 3x cubed, plus 1 over 3, and then integrate this thing here, so increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, plus c, I suppose we could tidy this up a little bit, ln 3x over 3x cubed minus 1 over 9 x to the minus 3 plus c. And there we are. Right then, so the final method we're going to see of how to integrate some functions is by partial fractions. So this is going to be a partial fractions beginner and then a integrating a finale. So uh, let's take x minus 5 over x plus 1 x minus 2, and we'll set it equal to its partial fractions, a over x plus 1 plus b over x minus 2. So let's times through by x plus 1, x minus 2, and hopefully you're quite good at this by now. So if you remember, it turns the x plus 1 swaps over to the b side, and then the x minus 2 swaps over to the a side. Reason being is that when you times by x plus 1, x minus 2 on everything, while well, the denominator will cancel out on the left, the x plus 1s will cancel out on the top and bottom of the a terms, so you'll just be left with x minus 2, and on the b term it would just be cancel out the x minus 2 on top and bottom, and you'll be left with the x plus 1. Then we substitute in strategic values of x, so let's start with minus 2 as the x, so it's plus 2 as the x value, so that's going to give us minus 3 equals uh, 2 minus 2, that's 0, so it's going to be big fat 0, and then 2 plus 3b, so that's uh, 3b, so b is equal to minus 1. Then we'll plug in the value of minus 1, so that's going to be minus 6 equals... Um, minus 1, minus 2, that's minus 3a, and then that would just be 0, so therefore a is going to equal 2. So, therefore, what are we actually going to be now integrating? We're now going to be integrating in its partial fraction form 2 over x plus 1 dx, we can we can separate the integrals here because they uh, they're just being added together, so you can always split up the integrals when there's an addition in there. Uh, minus one. So actually, what we could do there is factorize out the minus to the front. Minus one over x minus two dx. And then we use a couple of versions of the Lun rule. So remember, the Lun rule is: does the bottom differentiate to the top? Well, in the first one, no, it doesn't. The diff bottom differentiates uh, to 1, so really I would like the number 1 here, but I can't just make the 2 disappear without factorising it to the front. So this answer is going to be 2 ln x plus 1, minus, and then does the bottom differentiate to the top on the second one here? Yes, it does in this case here. Uh, x minus 2 differentiates to 1, so it's just going to be a straightforward x minus 2 plus c. And there you are, that's your final answer. So it's a little bit of partial fractions, and then you integrate those partial fractions. Okay, moving on to the next one, then x squared minus 6 over um, x plus 4, x minus 1. Well, the difference between this question here is that it was x minus 5, whereas this one here is x squared minus 6. So what we're going to have to do first 
is a bit of algebraic division. So it's going to be algebraic division followed by partial fractions followed by integration. Why do we have to do in algebraic division on this one? Well, because the powers, if you think about the highest power on the bottom here and the highest power on the top, they're going to be equal. So you need to do some algebraic division. I'll show you how you can do that in a second, but let's just go back to this one. When the power on the bottom is smaller, you don't need to do any of that algebraic division. When the power is bigger on the top, you do need to do algebraic division. So it's going to be x squared minus 6 divided by, uh, let's expand the brackets on this, x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals uh, something. So let's find out what that something is by um, timesing this up to the other side. So it's x squared minus 6 equals x squared plus 3x minus 4 times something. So that something is just going to be, well, what do I need to expand x squared by to make this x squared on the left? That's just 1. But then that's going to give me 3x, so I'll need to then take away 3x afterwards. It's also going to give me a minus 4, but I want minus 6, so I'm going to have to take away 2 now. So the left-hand side now is perfectly balanced with what we have on the right-hand side. So therefore, what we can say is that x squared minus 6 over x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equal to 1 minus 3x plus 2, because we're factorising out the negative out of both of them, um, x squared plus 3x minus 4. OK, so that's the algebraic division part done. We've now got a 1 at the front of our integral. But obviously, we'll probably put the denominator back into its original brackets. So now we're going to be splitting this part up using partial fractions. And the 1, well, that would just integrate to x. So the question now is 3x plus 2 over x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equal to a over, whoops, I was supposed to put that back in brackets, wasn't I? x plus 4x minus 1. So x plus 4, and then the second partial fraction will be x minus 1. Let's times through by x plus 4x minus 1, so that gives us 3x plus 2 equals a bracket x minus 1 plus b bracket x plus 4. So let's set x to be strategic values. Let's start with the number 1. So that's going to be 5 equals 0, 5b. So b is equal to 1. Let's now do the strategic value of minus 4. So it's going to give us minus 12 plus 2 is minus 10 equals minus 5a, so therefore a is equal to 2. So therefore, we now are at the stage where we can start integrating. It's going to be 1 minus uh, 2 over x plus 4. And then it's going to also be a minus, because it's minusing this whole thing here. Minus 1 over x minus 1 dx. So let's now integrate in turn. It's going to be x because 1 integrates to x. Now we need to use the Lund rule on this thing here. x plus 4 differentiates to 1, so it should be a 1 on the top. So I'm going to have to factorise that 2 out to the front. And then the last one here is going to be minus Lund x minus 1 plus c and there we are, that is a full question done there, so a bit of algebraic division to start with, then partial fractions, then integration. Moving on to the next one, 8x squared minus 19x plus 1 over 2x plus 1, x minus 2 squared. Now we don't need to do any algebraic division here because the highest power on the top is a 2, and the highest power on the bottom 
can imagine when we expand it out will be a 3. So no algebraic division needed here, thank goodness. It's just going to be a case of very complicated partial fractions. And hopefully you can remember what you need to do when you've got a squared term in a partial fractions question. It needs to be a over 2x plus 1 plus b over x minus 2 plus c over x minus 2 squared. Now this term here is going to be integrated differently. We'll see that again later. So let's times through by that denominator. It's going to be 8x squared minus 19x plus 1 is equal to a bracket x minus 2 squared plus b bracket 2x plus 1 x minus 2 plus c bracket 2x plus 1 like that. Let's leave some space on the side for the integration part of this question. So let's now plug in the value of minus a half. So minus a half is going to give us 2 minus, it would be a plus because it's minus a half, uh, 19 over 2 plus 1 equals, substituting in minus a half here, so it's going to be minus uh, 5 over 2, so it's be 25 over 4a. That term will disappear because it's got a 2x plus 1 in it. That term will disappear because it's got 2x plus 1 in it. So let's tidy up this term here. It's going to be 4 over 2, 5 over 2, 6 over 2. That's going to be 25 over 2 equals 25 over 4a. So therefore, a is equal to 2. Moving on to the next term, we're going to now substitute in the value 2 into this whole thing here, so uh, 2 will give us uh, 32 minus 38 plus 1 equals, well, when I substitute 2 into this expression, that will give me 0, when I substitute 2 into this expression here, that will give me 0, and when I substitute in 2 here, it's going to give me 5c. So let's now do the addition here, it's going to be minus 5 equals 5c, so therefore c is minus 1. Now the difficult part here is to work out what b is. Uh, the easiest thing to do here is just plug in the number 0 and use the terms from above. So that's going to be 1 equals a, which is the number 2, times by minus 2 squared, so that's going to give us an 8. Then substituting in 0 here is going to give us a minus 2b. And then substituting in 0 here is going to give us 1c, but c is minus 1, so it's going to give us minus 1. So let's tidy this up now. Let's move the 2b onto the other side, and then it's going to be um, 8 minus 1 is 7. Take away another one, that's 6. So b here is equal to 3. So we can now get started on our integration. So it's going to be the integral of 2 over 2 plus 2x plus 1, that would be nice, plus b, which is 3, so that's 3 over x minus 2, and then it's going to be minus 1 over x minus 2 squared dx. <coughs> so. First term, that's going to be easy, that's just ln 2x plus 1. Second term, that's pretty easy as well, that's just ln 3x, sorry, 3 ln x minus 2. <clears throat> but the second term here, this is going to be the tricky one. What we have to do here is we have to use an integration by substitution. So we're going to be setting x minus 2 equal to u, so it's going to be 1 over u squared, um, and then we change the dx for a du by differentiating, so du by dx equals 1, so therefore du is equal to dx, so we can just replace dx with a du. This is effectively u to the minus 2, so this is going to be increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, 
but then we plug back in the x minus 2, so it's minus 1 over x minus 2, but there was a minus at the front of that integral anyway, so the final answer is going to be ln 2x plus 1 for this first term, plus 3 ln x minus 2 for the second term, and then for the third term, this one here, but it's going to be subtracted anyway, so a double negative there will make it plus 1 over x minus 2 plus c. And there we are, wowzers. So that was the answer to this question here. It took forever, uh, but yeah, we've done it now. So it's uh, integration by, sorry, it's integration by partial fractions, split them up into partial fractions first, it takes a little while to do that, uh, integrate the first two, they're nice and easy, but then we have to use a substitution on the third one, it wasn't too bad in the end, that integration by substitution, and then your final answer there. Wowzers, on to the next one. Right then, let's get started on this integration by partial fractions question here, let's get into it straight away, so it's 1 minus x squared, uh, equals, and we're going to split it up into its partial fractions, which is 1 plus x and 1 minus x. So multiply by 1 minus x squared, and we get a bracket 1 minus x plus b times 1 plus x. Substituting in strategic values of x now, let's substitute 1 in, so we get 2 equals 0 plus 2b. So therefore b is equal to 1. And the other value of x is minus 1, so that's 2 equals uh, 1 minus minus 1, so that would make 2 to a, so therefore a is also equal to 1. So therefore, the integral we're calculating here is 1 over 1 plus x dx plus the integral of 1 over 1 minus x. So these are now ln rule integrals. Do I get the derivative of the bottom on the top of this fraction? In the first case, yes, I do. It's ln 1 plus x. And in the second case, no, I don't, because the derivative of 1 minus x is minus 1. So if I want a minus 1 on the top, I'll need to put a minus symbol at the front of the integral. So it's going to be minus ln 1 minus x uh, plus c. And if it's a take away of two learns you can actually divide inside the bracket so it's 1 plus x over 1 minus x plus c so there we are that's the answer to this integral moving on to the next one x squared minus x minus 4 over x plus 2 bracket x plus 1 squared so this is going to be a little bit more of a longer integration by partial fractions question we're going to have this fraction here split up into three other partial fractions. So hopefully you've remembered what to do here. It's x plus 2. Then we have 1 with just a single power of x plus 1 on the bottom. And then we have the last one with x plus 1 squared on the bottom. Then we'll multiply through by x plus 2, x plus 1. So we get x squared minus x minus 4 equals a bracket x plus 1 squared plus b bracket x plus 1 x plus 2 plus c bracket x uh, plus 2. So let's now put in strategic values of x. Let's put minus 1 in. So that's going to give me 1, add 1 minus 4 equals 0, 0. Putting in minus 1 here will give me 1c, so therefore c is equal to minus 2. Let's put the strategic value of minus 2 in, so that will give 4 plus 2 minus 4 equals, uh, minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1, minus 1 squared is just a, so therefore a is equal to 2. The rest, when you put in minus 2, will be 0. And uh, we've run out of numbers to put in to cancel out two of the other brackets to leave us just with b. So we'll put 0 in. And then that will give us minus 4 equals um, 1a. And that a value is 2. Then it will give us uh, two lots of b. And then it will give us, putting in 0, that would be 2 lots of c. c is minus 2, so that would be minus 4. 
So cancel out minus 4s from both sides, take away the 2 on the other side equals 2b, and we get b is minus 1. So the integral that we are now going to compute is a over x plus 2, that was 2 over x plus 2. And when you're doing partial fractions, you can always split them up into separate integrals. Then it's going to be take away, because it's minus 1, the integral of 1 over x plus 1 dx. And then c, that's a take away, because it's a minus 2, the integral of 2 over x plus 1 squared. So the first two are nice and easy, but the third one here needs a little bit of substitution to help us. The first one is going to be 2 ln x plus 2 from the ln rule. The next one is going to be minus ln x plus 1 by the ln rule. We can't use the ln rule on the last one though because the derivative of the bottom is not equal to the top. So what we'll have to do there is we'll have to do a substitution of u equals x plus 1. Therefore it's going to be 2 over u squared uh, d x, but then we can differentiate our substitution to get du by dx equals, differentiating our substitution gives us 1, so du here is equal to dx, so I'll just pop du in there straight away. So think about this as 2u to the minus 2, so this is going to be increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, so it's going to give us minus 2 um, over u, which is equal to minus 2 over x plus 1. But there was a minus at the front of the integral to start with, so it's now going to be plus 2 over x plus 1. So there we are. That's the answer to this question, obviously, plus c. So there we are. Moving on to the next one now. 2 plus x over... Four minus, so 8 minus 2x minus x squared. So this is going to have to factorise somehow. 2 plus x, and it's probably going to be, let's put an x and a minus x at the back of each bracket. It's going to give us um, minus 2x. So if I put a 4 here and a 2 here, then that's going to give me minus 4x, add the 2x, and it'll also give me the 8 at the front there. Good. So this is what we're going to turn into partial fractions. So it's going to be 4 plus x, and b over 2 minus x. So let's times through by 4 plus x, 2 minus x. So you get four, so a lots of 2 minus x, plus b lots of 4 plus x. Substituting in strategic values of x, let's put 2 in first, so we get 4 on the left, and we're going to get uh, 6b on the right, so b here is equal to 2 thirds. And then putting in the strategic value of minus 4, we're going to get minus 2 equals 2 minus minus 4, um, that's going to give me 6a, so here a is equal to minus 1 third. Great, so what we'll do then is we will, hmm, I think probably the best way to manage this is going to be like this. The integral is going to be equal to, so it's a first, so I'm going to put minus one third at the front of the bracket, and I'm just going to put one inside there, four plus x. Then it's going to be plus b, which is two thirds, so two thirds at the front of the bracket, uh, integral one over two minus x dx. And then it's going to be minus one third, learn, does the bottom differentiate to the top perfectly? Yes, it does, so it's learn four plus x. And then for the second one, does the bottom differentiate to the top perfectly? No, it would be minus one if we differentiated the bottom, so we need to balance that out with a negative symbol at the front. So it's going to be minus two thirds, learn two minus x plus c. Lovely, there we are, that's the answer to this question. Right then, and the final question here, we've got 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8x minus 22, and on the bottom it's just a power of x squared, so the first thing we need to do here is algebraic division. So let's go ahead now and do the algebraic division, it's going to be 2x cubed 
plus 3x squared minus 8x minus 22 divided by this thing equals something. So if I multiply that onto the other side, uh, and now I can expand this bracket, so it's times something, so it's going to be x squared minus x minus 6, and then I need to work out what the division is going to be, so it's going to be 2x at the front, that will give me my 2x cubed, then it's going to be minus 2x squared, but I don't want minus 2x squared, I want plus 3x squared, so it'll have to be plus 5, to give me the 5x squared to get me back up to here, uh, and then if I expand the brackets again, I'll get minus 2x, I've done the minus 2x squared, I'll get minus 12x, and I'll also get um, minus 5x. So that would mean I need to, I've got minus 17 here, but I only want minus 8, so I'll need to add on 9 more x's. And I'll also need to do, so it'll be minus 30, so I'll also need to add on 8 to get me back up to um, minus 22. So therefore, this integral is going to be equal to 2x plus 5 plus 9x plus 8 over x minus 3 x plus 2. Good, excellent. So let's start doing the integration, sorry, let's start doing the partial fractions now. So it's going to be 9x plus 8 equals a bracket x plus 2 plus b bracket x minus 3. Next step, we'll plug in strategic values of x. So we'll put minus 2 in first. So that's going to give me minus 18 plus 8. So that's minus 10 equals 0. And then it'll be minus 5b. So b equals 2. And then putting in the strategic value of 3 is going to give me 27. 27 plus 8 is 35. And then putting in 3 here gives me 5a, so this is going to be a equals 7. So the integral now, moving up to the top here, is going to be 2x plus 5 plus 7 over x minus 3 plus 2 over x plus 2 dx. So let's now do the integration. 2x integrates to x squared. 5 integrates to 5x. 7 over x minus 3 is going to be 7 ln x minus 3 plus 2 ln x plus 2 plus c. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to this final question. Yay, we've completed all of these integration questions. So what you need to do now is uh, make sure that everything went okay. If anything didn't go okay, you go back and practice those areas. Do come back to this video and use it time and time again to get some more practice of integration by substitution, integration by parts, integration by partial fractions. Um, you need to just keep on practicing this skill um, until you're absolutely fantastic at it. And using this video, you can build up those skills to become absolutely fantastic at it. Well, thank you very much for watching this video and hopefully you found it helpful.